What's going on everyone? Today we're going to look at a BZIP2 archive that inflates to 1.4 million times its size. No, I'm not kidding. So a little backstory on why I'm even making a video on this. The only reason I found what was going on here is because I was doing some benchmarks to see which of the compression algorithms were the best. Particularly what I was interested in is which one was best in compressing all zeros. So let's back up and recreate the tests I did. So I started off by making a one gigabyte file, and I did so, I'll just start this real quick, and I did so by using DD. I basically took dev0 as the input, I made data.junk as the output, and then I wrote 1024 one megabyte blocks to that file. Now to be clear, dev0, it's not actually zeros, it's, it's null characters, just to be technically accurate. The important thing is that all the characters are the same. Now that I have my one gigabyte file, I'm going to do benchmarks for gzip, tar, xz, and 7z. So I'll take these four commands, I'll run those, and it'll compress that one gigabyte file once each for all the algorithms. So now that that's done, we can check out the results. So 7z and xz were pretty good. It took, it took one gig down to 157k. gzip was the next best at one megabyte, and then tar actually made the file bigger. At this point is when I tried bzip2, and when I ran this and it finished, the results were pretty incredible. So now that's done, we'll check it out. And I was really surprised to see that one gigabyte was compressed down to 785 bytes. So that got me thinking, if it can compress it that much, that means I could store 10 terabytes of data in, in what? A file that's like 7.8 megabyte. I mean, that's small enough to where you can just email somebody that. But then it hit me, how do I compress 10 terabytes of data if I don't have 10 terabytes of hard drive space? Well, no problem. In that case, all I have to do is use DD, and rather than outputting it to a file, I just pipe it to bzip2 compress, and then redirect the output to, I called it cutekittens.bz2, you know, because we're going to try to trick people into opening this file, and who wouldn't want to open a, a, an archive called cute kittens? I know I do. So beyond just tricking your friends or whatever and filling up their hard drive with null bytes, what if this file was able to be snuck onto a server and, and extracted? You could theoretically just fill up their entire hard drive. I actually made one of these archives. It took about six and a half hours to make, but I created an archive here that is 1.49 megabytes, and it, and it holds 10 terabytes of data. But you could make an archive as big as you want. You could make a one petabyte archive that is only 140 megabytes on disk. Now you may be thinking to yourself at this point, well, if you can get access to somebody's server to install a file and start extracting it, wouldn't you just do something else to it? And, and the answer is yes. But there are ways where it, it could work. And one I found, for instance, I won't name the actual service, but it's a... It's a file sharing type service, and when I put this file in to their service, not this exact file, but a small one, I realized that when I double clicked that file, it showed me a preview of what was in it. And that tells me that they would have had to have ex extracted that file. Now there's a chance that they're blocking it. I didn't, I didn't upload my 10 terabyte one just in case it did work. I, you know, it's legally gray area. So I didn't do that, but I, I mean, it certainly indicated that it would have worked. Now, I did discover all this out on my own, but when I went to research it later on Google, I did find out that this is a known vulnerability, and they've known about it now for about 12 years. Now, before I wrap this video up, I'm just going to demonstrate the extraction here. You can see that the file is only 1.4 megabyte. So if I do bzip2-d, specify cute kittens, it's just going to start extracting. So I'm going to put it in the background, then I'll just watch you know, every... 0.3 seconds. You can see that it just continues to fill up. Let me add an H here. So 3.6 gig, 4, you know, we're way above the 1.4 megabyte. And this thing's just going to keep on running and running until it gets to 10 terabyte or it runs my hard drive out of space. So let's go ahead and stop this now before it runs it out. And then as soon as I stop it, it of course, you know, quits, quits making more files. And that's really it. I thought this was really interesting, and I, I wanted to share it with everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below, and I'll see you on the next one.